G'day everyone, today we're going to be talking about uh, fixed bridges versus floating bridges. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I was at one of the local music stores and they had basically two of these guys. Uh, one had a Floyd Rose and one had a uh, fixed bridge, just like this guy. Um, both of them had a set of EMG uh, 81 and 60. Yeah, that's an 81 and 60. Um, I plugged them both in because I'm actually interested in perhaps getting another one of these guitars and um, plug, you know, plugged one in, sounded fine. Actually, I plugged in, the um, they had a blue one, it was one of the E2s. But um, I plugged that in first, sounded fine. Then I plugged in the one with the Floyd Rose and instantly I noticed that the one with the Floyd Rose had virtually um, no bass in the sound. So um, that kind of got me on this little quest of um, the difference between fixed bridge versus a Floyd Rose. Um, well, let's have a chat about the Floyd Rose. So if you haven't used one of these before, I'm guessing you probably have if you're watching this, you can do all those sort of you know, crazy sound effects, like if you've ever listened to you know, Slayer or um, Exodus, Pantera, anything like that, Van Halen, you can do all these crazy sounds and the guitar basically in theory it should stay in tune and generally they're pretty darn good. Um, there's a lot of um, misconceptions or these things do get a bit of a bad rap um, mainly for setting up they get they, you know, they get a bit of a bad rap. Uh, just for example like if you want to set the intonation you'd have to basically loosen the string off and get to that little screw right under the string loosen that off move the saddle back or forth depending where you need it. Now you can't say like when you sit on one of these guys you change those screws there oh well I'll give it half a turn, quarter of a turn. These guys you basically just sort of have to feel it out and hopefully you get it right. Uh, so once you move the saddle where you want it, now they generally want to move bloody back and forth these things because they still have a little bit of tension on the string. Um, lock the nut back down tune the string back up to pitch and then hopefully you got it right because if you haven't then you got to go through the whole process again um, now another thing when you're doing a setup on these guys try and block the tremolo whether you want to do it from under here or the back of the guitar whatever you want so they have their setup issues now the other thing is if you want to adjust the string height you've got that screw there and one over here now I've heard a lot of people say that you really should uh, back the string tension right off because you can basically blunt the uh, knife edges under here and if you blunt those you're kind of in deep shit. Um, one thing I have noticed occasionally while recording like you hear that sound that sometimes will come through the mic um, so sometimes I'll just take the arm out while recording or um, I've even tried lubricating it and things like that just to try some different things um, so there's the setup factor. Now, my biggest thing about why this has bugger all bass, now if I can do this without dropping the, uh, the guitar. Okay, get that out of the way. Here's why I think these things have no bass, or less bass. You've got to cut a hole all the way through the guitar. And all this is directly under the pickups so instantly you're losing you know probably about a good half an inch you know and that's right under the pickups so you've got you know not a lot of wood right under the pickups um, and my other beef of these things is, is those screws right at the top there um, when I first got this guitar When I first got this guitar, it, um, if you go through some of my old videos, it originally came out with um, an MG81 and a 85. I've put a Damasio Deactivator X in there and a Seymour Duncan Invader. Um, when we took out the neck pickup, we discovered that those two screws at the back of the body holding the claw in um, actually went through the neck pickup cavity, so that wasn't too impressive. Um, so that's a few things with the Floyd Rose. Now another thing with the Floyd Rose is the uh, string bending. When you, now watch this, if you've never played one, 
All I'm doing is is this. Can you say the bridge moving there? So what's happening there is as you bend the note, the bridge moves. Effectively, the bridge is doing that as you bend the string. Um, so you sort of find yourself chasing the note a little bit more. And your unison bend will never really be in pitch with your bass player, or keyboard player, whoever you're playing with. You're always going to be that little bit flat. Um, so there's a few things to bear in mind with the Floyd Rose. Um, now these guys... Yeah, this one here, and this one here. Um, the setup work is really easy. Um, both of these guys have uh, Tone Pros tunematic bridges. And one thing that's really great about those is, so that little screw, like right here, right near my finger, and there's another one right there. So when you take the strings off these guys, the bridge and the tar post don't just go falling off like they would on a, you know, let's say, a Gibson and Epiphone. I think Epiphone's actually sort of woken up a little bit and started using um, some sort of locking mechanism of their own. But um, the setup works a lot easier. If you want to adjust the intonation, you basically just go through those screws there. Sometimes it might be easier to loosen the string off a fraction and just get it out of the way. But like I said with, with the Floyd Rose, you can't just say, I'll give it half a turn or anything like that. These guys, you can say, I'll give it half a turn one way or the other. Um, adjusting the string height on these guys is really easy. It's just, I use the screws there, or you can use the thumb wheel under here. Um, and since I've kind of gotten off using the Floyd Rose, and using the fixed bridge a lot more, I've really gotten into um, the bending a lot more, you know, Marty Friedman, um, sort of style, Carl Sanders from Nile, even yeah, some of the Albert King or um, Stevie Ray Vaughan sort of stuff, just really getting into the bending. So one thing I have done, if you have a look at this guitar, you'll notice that the tail piece is actually higher on this side as opposed to that side. Now, one thing I like about doing that, and actually I got that from a uh, Scott Grove video clip, um, was that if you lift that side, for example, you get a little less string tension over here. So it can make the bending a little easier. You can still have, you know, all of these three guitars have um, Ernie Ball tend to, actually except for this one right now. This has got the uh, Dunlop Super Bright, so they sent me a while ago. Um, well, both of these guys have got, um, they've, they've all got 10 to 46. The Ernie Ball, Ernie Ball, and Dunlop Super Brights. Um, if I raise this side of the bridge, like I was saying, I can get a little less string tension over here to make the bending a little easier, and I can still use 10 to 46 without having to, like, you know, change string gauges or reset up the guitar. So that's a bit of a bonus with that. And the tone, uh, this, is, this is what I don't like really using as a guitarist because it's just oh, you hear guitarists going man my tone yeah it's just I found the sound at least on this guy and this guy a lot fuller than that now you hear everyone say that the Duncan Invader is super bassy and muddy and blah 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 it's not really a bad pickup I, I think it's gotten a bit of an unnecessary bad rap but these guys sound fuller and just more solid. Um, so there's definitely a few pros and cons there to consider. Now, if you're playing one of these guys on stage, you know, Floyd Rose or any sort of floating bridge, you snap a string, you're in deep shit, you better have a spare guitar ready to go. Um, I have snapped strings on stage before on a tunematic bridge. I think I snapped a B, for it, a B string, for example. Uh, Mid-solo, that wasn't too bad. That was like a nice introductory to... Uh, improv uh, string skipping so there's lots of pros and cons here now with this guy in particular I'm getting like um, two tone sometimes two and a half tone bends out of it um, this one because of the floating bridge I find myself sort of chasing the notes a bit more um, that's probably look really about it um, I think the setup work on these guys is a hell of a lot quicker and easier 
because uh, as soon as you alter the tuning on these guys, you, you know, you're going to be sitting there for a while. Um, and yeah, look, once you lock them up at the locking nut, generally everything's um, pretty well right to go. Um, but I'm not really here to say one's better than the other, just there's some pros and cons. I think these guys sound a lot fuller. Occasionally, yeah, right, you will have to tune them a bit more because they don't have a locking nut. But I think they sound fuller. So that's my two cents on that. Anyway, hope that was enjoyable and catch us later. Bye.